Hey guys, uh, excuse the voice. I'm I'm getting over a little bit of a a cold, just a cold. Don't freak out. Don't freak out. I'm fine. Uh, but I wanted to make a quick little video here, uh, just another little like dev tip or thing that I do a lot that uh, could maybe help some of your workflows uh, using Substance Painter. In this specific scenario, I'm going to be talking about how to add ambient occlusion to certain height effects to kind of create the illusion of depth or like the idea that you baked in more detail than you did. So here I have a pretty basic... Uh, like gun belt that I quickly threw together that you know was designed to go against someone's chest or or what have you, uh, and it's got some pretty simple basic you know baked maps everything like that works pretty well. Uh, I got some very basic simple materials just thrown on here. I just wanted something to kind of show this technique uh, too. Um, so what I'm gonna do to the belt is I want to add some stitching to this, and I want to add uh, another one of these sort of tag things here. And I want to make it feel sort of baked into this model. So normally what you know I see a lot of people do, uh, if they want to add like a tag, add a fill layer, you know, uh, add a black mask, paint, do your brush panel, select a you know hard brush or what have you, or use a shaped alpha. Let's just do this very, very simple, very, very fast. Okay, okay, awesome. Right, so I have I have this masked out now. Let's just very simply uh, say, hey, uh, alt click to only select the height. And that's really useful. You can alt click any one of these things just to only select that layer, um, or you can alt double click to um, have all the layers selected that it's affecting. So alt click on height, you know, pull up the height, make a color. Say, let's make this red darker red and maybe maybe you want to get fancy with it so uh you say hey uh height let's set height to replace and uh normal let's set normal to replace and let's turn on normal there you go boom so what i'm doing is i have a height I am replacing the height information below and i'm replacing the normal information below uh, and I can like set up the roughness now to mask it. So essentially, if I go if I go through these masks now, you know, I have here's my base color, my roughness, my normal. You see here, like because I'm using replace, I'm replacing the normal, uh, my height, obviously, my normal height combination, and the mask back again. And so that's what nor normally that's what you would do. You would kind of like leave this here, and and it's it's fine. Normally it's okay. That's 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 passable for 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 ninety percent of what you want to do. But if you really want to get a little more believable, one of the things that I like to do as a little extra bit of detail is add in some ambient occlusion around the area that I'm adding height to. How do I go about doing that? Go into your texture set settings. You're going to want to make sure that you can edit your ambient occlusion channel. So here in your channels, make sure you see ambient occlusion listed. If not, click this little plus button and you're going to say, hey, add ambient occlusion. Boom. Now I have an ambient occlusion channel that I can edit. Uh, by default, it's set to multiply. So whatever ambient occlusion color you put on here is going to get multiplied down on top of this ambient occlusion map here. So we're going to take this layer. I'm going to duplicate this layer, okay? I'm going to now select the bottom layer, <laughs> go back down to the base bottom layer, and I'm gonna say, hey, I wanna affect ambient occlusion, right? This is the only thing I wanna affect, ambient occlusion, boom, ambient occlusion. Now I'm gonna crank this all the way down. And you're seeing here, look, I'm, I'm actually affecting the ambient light contribution to that section of the model. It's kinda cool how powerful this is, right? So here, I'm gonna crank it down to here, right? Well, that's kind of cool, but you know, the tag itself shouldn't have like this sort of darkness. We want the darkness just around the sides. Well, first thing I would do is go to the mask, add a filter to this mask, and add blur. And so what that's gonna do is it's going to allow me to blur this mask slightly. Just kissing the edges there with a little more contribution than needed. I'm gonna to go to the layer above that one. 
I'm going to turn on ambient occlusion for this as well. You'll see here that it's a white color. And I'm going to say, hey, ambient occlusion. Instead of setting it to multiply, I'm going to say replace. Now, what does that do? Well, it says, hey, Mr. Ambient Occlusion, darken this whole area, but then the layer above it, replace it with no ambient occlusion multiplication. And you can see here exactly what it did. It almost looks like it added a drop shadow to that mask, but in reality, what it did, and if I zoom out here, you can kind of see it, is it just added a little bit of ambient occlusion around your height. And it, and it gives that sense, oh man, that I've, I've actually like baked in a three dimension, especially like here from a distance, almost looks like, hey, I've really baked in kind of that detail. That's a very simple version of this technique. Let's, let's make this a little more complicated so I can show you just how powerful this technique can be. Let's say now, instead of just a tag, I want to add uh, stitching across this entire, these, these edges of this belt. This belt needs to look like it was basically stitched together. It's a very, you know, common thing to do in painters to do sort of a stitch pass. Uh, so let's set it up just like we did with the, the previous example with the first layer, right? So we're going to add a fill layer, right click, add black mask, right click to that back black mask, add a paint layer. Awesome. In our brush settings um, here, we can type the word stitch. And we have a bunch of different stitching options. I'll leave it to you to pick what stitch brush you want. I'm just going to probably just pick the paint roller stitches just because that gives me kind of a really simple stitch. And, you know, you can do some fancy tricks on how to auto apply these stitches and whatnot. Um, for now, I'm just going to manually paint them on the belt itself. And I will come back to you once that's done. And with the power of movie magic, uh, we have uh, essentially painted a bunch of stitches on the belt. So here I have uh, simply a, a stitch layer, and I blurred it slightly just to kind of clean up any of the resolution issues that I was seeing. Um, so again, most people would leave this as is, and what, what I'm affecting with this is essentially just the height and the roughness. Um, I don't even have the height set to replace. It's just simply a linear dodge because I just want it to feel like it's inset in the leather. But you are more than welcome to set that to replace if you want a kind of sharper feel to it. Or you can even turn on your normal map option. Go here to normal, set that to replace. And now you have a very clean stitch. That looks okay, right? And you know, could be passable, but let's say we want to create the look of an actual baked in stitch. So how would I go about creating a much more realistic stitch? Well, with the normal and the height set to replace, I would first duplicate the layer. Because we have a little bit of blur attached to each of these paint layers, it's going to affect the edges of the stitch differently than the internals of the stitch, creating right off the gate a very cool looking internal bulge to the to the stitch, uh, which automatically gives it way more presence than it than initially did. So right off the bat, really, really cool. Uh, the second thing I would do is I would go to the layer underneath. So this so the second thing I would do is go to the layer underneath, I would turn on ambient occlusion, and just like we did with our mask, I would turn that all the way down. And then, just like we did previously, I would go back to the ambient occlusion channel, go to the layer above, and set it from multiply to replace. So let's take a look at how that looks. So right out the gate, we have a nice stitch. We have an ambient occlusion right around it to make it look like it's baked in. So there, now that we have that, we have a little bit of ambient occlusion uh, baked in to the lower level, or at least it looks like it is. And so now it's just a matter of sort of taking the stitch and making it kind of the color that you want it to be. Obviously you don't want to go too crazy with it. But it gives it gives just a much more 
a believable read. And playing with ambient occlusion alongside your height adjustments is a really easy way of creating kind of the illusion of baked in uh, baked in details. And so with that, uh, we've created some very believable sort of baked in ambient occlusion to our stitches. And as you can see, that little bit of ambient occlusion really helps seat a lot of the stitches that we've done hand painting on the belt. This concept can be applied to really complex masks like piping or uh, seam lines or panel lines or like leather padding or different things like that that you would do in Painter. Anything that really involves sort of height maps or height map tricks, including sort of an ambient occlusion pass after the fact underneath those layers to help seat those layers is only going to improve what these things will look like once it gets into the engine. So that's just a little trick just to keep in mind. Make sure you're playing with the ambient occlusion um, and, and having a contribution to the height layers themselves. I uh, hope you found that useful, and I will hopefully see you in the next one.